years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let's try it one more time, huh? <clears throat> Hey, listen, everybody, we were having all kinds of miseries, and we had to restart the show yet one more time. And here I am, and now we're going to try and do a program. Let me do one last thing. This is just something I have to do because I don't like the... uh, Every time I have to reboot the machine, uh, the picture that I get here is brighter than it should be, and I don't want it to be brighter than it should be, okay? So then I uh, go here, uh, down here, and I do that, and you'll see me, see that? Isn't that fun? Well, uh, that will just be there for a second while I, until I do this, and there we go with that, and then I go over to advanced, and I turn my color down, my brightness down, to like a 37 and uh, I turn off the auto focus and we're fine and now uh, we are also online and I want to make sure here but we're online and everybody can start calling me again if they do even want to call me again but they'll be able to hear me now because it's working uh, so um, uh, Kathleen uh, St- uh, Jeff uh, Josh uh, Phil, where are you? Okay, time for you to give me a call. Let me know what uh, what's happening here. Okay, come on, we want to hear from you because now my Skype is working. All right, Jesus Almighty. <coughs> yeah. Uh, 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 well, I guess I can. I, you know, what happened was we had a lot of problems here. I couldn't. They could not hear me. And so I had to reboot the whole machine, and that seemed to clean the problem up. But now they're not, uh, they're not calling me. Oh, wait a minute. For all the people who are listening to us online, um, we just restarted the show. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay. All can right. you do this? Are you there? Can you hear me? I can. Yay! Oh, boy. You know, if it isn't one thing... It's fucking another, you know? Here comes Phil. Okay, we got Phil coming. All right, Phil. Come on, Phil. Phil, all right. For those people listening to the audio version of the show uh, at a later time, you're going to find that uh, uh, you're just going to come in on the middle of the show or something like that, you know? But a lot of you just watch the video. Hi there, Josh. How are you? Jeff should be calling, sir. uh, uh, Hello? Yep, yep. Jeff should be calling. And uh, I, you know what it was? It was, it was, it, I had to reboot the machine. It wasn't wow. somehow my Skype wasn't picking up my video for you guys or audio. Uh, you know, I, I had to reboot my machine earlier, uh, just a few minutes before the show, uh, because the Skype wasn't working right. It was freezing and it wasn't allowing me to choose GabNet. They may, as have, an address. They may have done an upgrade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think it did because my uh, my layout looks different than it did the last time I, I I had it open and called. Yeah, like you know the the like the color scheme and stuff like that looks different, and I, I didn't change anything. So yeah. I had to reboot nothing. Well, I know because you didn't don't have anything to reboot. <laughs> It was always. Well, angry. we had a nice conversation. We I did. know. Yeah. I, I, it was driving me nuts. Well, you have a good video on the show, folks, tonight. But your audio that you're going to get of this is, eh, <laughs> it's going to be kind of sucko. Uh, oh. No, no, it, hey, it uh, won't have a beginning because I forgot to turn okay. it on here and record. Between so. Josh and Alex coughing and sneezing, am I am I going to catch something? Are you guys contagious? Right. <laughs> but no. you know, I mean, all I know is that uh, all I had to do was reboot, and then, well, it, it started up. You know, it's funny that you, you go away for a weekend, and you, maybe the machine's rebooted itself a couple of times for various reasons because I was having some problems this week, and uh, th- then you come to the weekend, 
and uh, you come to to Tuesday, and you figure everything's going to be fine, but everything isn't going to be fine. Yay, Jeff! Yeah, yeah. here comes Jeff, Jeff. ladies and gentlemen. There's Jeff. Okay, now you can hear me, right, Jeff? You sound wonderful. See, I sound wonderful. Of course, I sound <laughs> wonderful. It's new screen time. Hmm. New screen. Yeah. Oh, there you got it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, a real pro. I, I'm getting. All right, well, it's been a great show. Good night, everybody. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I I wasn't even going to do a show tonight, and then I said, "Well, some people will be disappointed." Kathleen asked if I was going to do a show tonight, so I said yes. So she was probably looking forward to that, right? Yeah. Now you uh, know you was. Did you see? Uh, did you have any legal work done today? What do you mean? Did I have any legal work done today? Uh, was today the day you were seeing the uh, going to court? No, it's next week. Oh, okay. But I'm, I let me let me tell you a little story here. Uh, I'm getting a little pissed at my lawyer, okay, mm. which is not a good thing to do just before you're going to court. But uh, all of a sudden today he writes us and he says, "Could you go down to the to Varick and uh, and Houston Street?" To the uh, voters, the voter people, whatever they call them, the election board of elections, yeah. and and get a certified uh, thing of your vote that you you know where you vote, right? <laughs> and I, I'm thinking to myself, the trial is next Monday, and this is what Tuesday. It, shouldn't you ask for this like weeks ago? And you know, with us, it's like Varick and Houston Street is in another planet. Okay, I mean, it's in the Bowery. It's it, no, it's not in the Bowery, but it's 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 down in that area. Yeah. So I it, girlfriend took the day off today because she had something done in her back, and I said, "Ah, let's just go down there. You know, let's just get this over with." And it had me pissed off because I just wanted to stay home and get nurse this cold, right? So we get in we we so we get on the on the two train, and the two train takes us to the one train, and the one train takes us to Houston, and we get out, and it's Varick and Houston Street. How easy was that? Mm -hmm. And then we go up to the the voters' place, and it's empty. There's the only people there are the people who work there, and we walk up to the guy and we tell him, hey, we want need to get something about our voting record. He says, oh yeah, because you need a certified record of that for some court case you're in, right? And Take I, the number and wait. Oh yeah, God. and they said, so we'll be with you in a second. Five minutes later, they come back. They got it all certified. We leave. We're home within an hour. But it just pissed me off that the, the, the lawyer waited till today. Maybe he just figured that it would be a good thing at the last minute. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, thank you. You know, I, I just to, wanted to make sure you were interested. I had to do something the other day for him. I had to go down uh, down here to 125th and and, uh, and and Adam Clayton Powell to the big government building there, the Adam Clayton Powell building, uh, to uh, to get uh, some uh, certified records of the rental history of this apartment house. Can can you bill them back for your time? I wish I could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish I fucking so, could. Next Tuesday, you'll get a bill in the mail for three hundred seventy-five dollars for the time it took him to send you the email to tell you to go get that. Oh shit. yeah, he'll he'll probably send us a bill for that. You know, <laughs> and then he wants to have a two-hour meeting with us at the end of this week uh, to uh, uh, to go over the stuff before we go in there. And quite frankly, I'm I'm so out of it, I just don't even know if I can testify. I'm just I'm just pissed. You know? Don't don't. Don't give up. You're on the last stretch. Yeah. Yeah, but you know? uh, this is this is getting to be the expensive stretch. Okay. Yeah. You know, trials are not cheap. You know what pisses me off? Although I do probably have some kind of recourse, is that we, to be honest with you, we did nothing wrong. The only thing we did wrong was rent an apartment from somebody who was unscrupulous. Okay. Basically, that was it. And all we all we wanted was a nice place to live, and this was a nice place to live. And um, Jeff's been here; you'll agree it's a nice place to live, you know. And uh, I just really pissed by it, you know. 
uh, that, that we've had to put out all this money, all this time, all this grief, for what? Not something we did not do. Yeah, but, uh, you know, nobody picks these things. It happens. You're just lucky that you were able to afford to get the justice and, uh, you know, and, and possibly wind if up. You know, wait a minute. We haven't gotten the justice yet. We don't know what this goddamn judge is going to say, you know, or how he's going to how he's going to come out on this. So, you know, I mean, uh, for all we know, you know, these things could go anyway. I mean, I, I, if if everything is right, we are on the side of the right. OK, I mean, every all previous judges have said, oh, listen, you know, the Schwarzman's uh, Schwarzman Millers have no. They're, they're, they're innocents in this whole thing. Yeah. But, you know, we don't know this judge is going to feel the same way. Yeah. You know. Is this the hanging judge? It, who knows? <laughs> I don't know. You know. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, so that was the, the irritable news today. The good news is <clears throat> I'm trying to clear my throat. Excuse me, folks. We guessed. I sound like an old man, don't I? Um. Yeah. Club. I uh, I uh, I got the uh, the uh, the uh, oncologist that I was trying to get. I have an appointment on the sixteenth. Rudy's oncologist. Rudy's oncologist. This is the guy that saved Rudy Giuliani's life a few years back by putting seeds in his prostate. Uh, and the gonna problem see. was he had marigolds come out of it. Well, the question is going to be how long I'm going to go with this guy before I say. You did Rudy, didn't you? You know, I know you did Rudy. And then, you know, like, thanks. Yeah, he lived. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for doing Rudy. You know, but, uh, well, no, he lived. He's, <clears throat> he survived 20 years past the, uh, the, the seeds being implanted. So I figure the guy's okay, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all, I'm just waiting for all kinds of bad news because I'm get, I get bad news all the time these days, so. Be nice well, you got it under control. I mean, you're doing you're doing <coughs> something about it. You know what it is, and yeah. uh, you're not falling apart. Oh, really? You are falling apart. I am falling you're, you're apart. Not, you're, not, you're, not, cold. you're not going crazy. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny when I tell people I have cancer now, mm -hmm. they they have a weird kind of reaction to it. Yeah, you know, fungus. huh? Yeah, like like I, I, like I got the cooties. Yeah. Well, you had you had cancer, right, uh, uh, Kathleen? You had breast cancer. Yep. Did you find that was the same thing when you told somebody you had cancer? All of a sudden, they were like, "You know, I pretty much didn't tell anybody. The only people I told was when I was at UPS was you know my manager, and he kept it under wraps, and HR, and they kept it under wraps." Yeah, how frightening was that experience for you? It was pretty frightening because my dad died at 37 from a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. You know, and cancer runs rampant in my family. You know, when I had my son, I had his cord blood saved just in case something happens with either he or I. But now, what, what in saving the cord blood, what are you talking about? Uh, stem cells. Stem cells? Yes. Yep. Good. That's good. That was good thinking. Now, your yep. son's 14? Yeah. So 14 years ago, they stem cells were sort of cutting edge and really not. Uh, Bush was saying that you know they were bad, and uh, you know 14 years ago, uh, nobody was people, saying they were bad. What they were arguing was where they were getting the stem cells from. Cells from, yeah. but uh, you know, Bush, uh, you know, he he didn't uh, he didn't care for it. Stem stem cell research wasn't high on his uh, approval right. list. No. And and 14 years ago would have been in the thick of that, so. Yep. And now it's a, a part of a, a part of medicine, you know. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I did my research for six months, and I discussed it with my mom, who was a nurse. And when she was a nurse, she was first an oncology nurse. As a matter of fact, um, you know, when AIDS first came out, you know, she was. I remember her sitting us down, telling us about this blood disorder. There were all kinds of rumors and stuff out there. So when I told her that I wanted to save Sean's cord blood, she said, oh, yes, absolutely. 
Yeah. Because you never know down the line. Yeah. Yeah. That's that was cutting edge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I pay 125 years to have it banked. Oh, really? So every November, I cut a check. Oh, yeah. Yep. How expensive is it to bank it? 125 bucks a year. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Did you hear about those uh, cryogenics uh, places that uh, were storing all sorts of things? And yeah. uh, I think the uh, the stuff melted, the, the sperm... Yeah. Melted and uh, I think it was a sperm bank where the sperm yeah. melted. Yeah. It was a cryogenic yeah. sperm, sperm yeah. bank. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Here comes Jeff. Well, not Jeff. Jeff's I mean here. Kevin. Jeff. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. I'm. I'm just. I'm losing it. I'm an old man now. You know. <laughs> hey. Uh, you know. How about that Biden malarkey tour? Well, wait a minute. Let, well, think... we'll get to that in a second. Let's take one thing at a time. All right. Well, yeah. don't drive us into a ditch. This early. Well, no, it was the show. get off my lawn tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, um, you know, uh, the, the one thing uh, and Kathleen uh, that you don't know about her is that she's a Halstead. And now that may not mean anything to you, but if you live in Chicago and you're listening to us in Chicago, you know, there's a what a Halstead Avenue or Boulevard or yeah, Street? Halstead Halstead Street runs right down the heart of Chicago, and it's actually named after uh, Caleb Halstead, and possibly I'm not too sure it might be William Halstead, and they were uh, bankers. Oh, Great I thought it was named too. after your uh, uh, your relative, who's very famous. William Stewart Halstead was actually he was. No, in, tell tell um, him what, tell him what he can any, give them a hint and let them see if they can guess what he invented. Um, well, what he introduced into surgery is what all surgeons wear now on their Gross. hands. <laughs> well, that's, that's an off. You could shoot a goddamn. Mask. Huh? No, uh, rubber gloves. <laughs> he introduced gloves. rubber gloves into surgery. He also did the first gallbladder surgery on his mom in his sister's kitchen. The, the uh, mastectomy. Uh, is the actually, mastectomy. actually, it wasn't as much an operation as he got mad at his mother. <laughs> and he went at her with a kitchen knife. He uh, did experimentation with cocaine and dentistry. Of course, ended up addicted to it, and then uh, and addicted to morphine the whole time he was a surgeon. Yeah, he could have been in radio and get the same thing. My mom got teased <laughs> when she was going to nursing school. She got teased a lot about him. Really? The uh, yeah. the the. The Kingston Mines Blues Bar is on Halstead in Chicago. It's a great blues bar. Yep. I spent yeah, a night the there one time. It's the longest, straightest street in the United States. I spent a night there one time. Oh, it was ugly leaving. I now, bet. The only time I was in Chicago was in the airport. Uh, but I understood that Michigan Avenue ran uh, the, the longest. Yeah, of, and, uh, and I got lost on South Michigan Avenue. Yeah. A tour, a white tourist in a in a car with a map, not yeah. good. Nope. <laughs> now South Michigan I, I started Avenue running is that in lights. Ohio? I started running red lights so I would get pulled over, and then yeah. I realized, oh, there's a. It was the old Comiskey Park, and I realized that's where it was, and I started heading for that because I knew the freeway was right by it. Yeah. yeah. And I and I just started dodging hookers and hoping I was going to get pulled over. And then I hooker? saw the freeway and said, okay, I know where I'm at now. <laughs> yeah, I no. pulled over at one stoplight to look at a map, and that's a mistake, oh, especially yeah. in a rental car. Uh, they started cleaning your windows? Oh, no. Oh, it, was, it was 2, two o'clock, 2.30 in the morning. In the morning. And there's kids out there in diapers on the street corners, burned out <laughs> buildings, and, yeah. and kids playing basketball and I'm going, I, I am in the wrong part of town. Yeah. You ever been to the South Bronx in the 70s? No, no. no. But it was that, was, like that, that was enough of an experience for me. When I told people at the plant when I went the next morning down to the plant, they said, what? You're on South <laughs> Michigan? <laughs> and you're here? <laughs> I understand it goes on forever. Though. Oh, yeah, it sure. does. And, and if you, you know, the reason I was there is because I was looking for the, the sign to get me back to the freeway. And I was following it along, and I guess there was a bus parked in front of the sign that where I was supposed to turn, and I kept going straight. Oh, damn. Yeah. 
got thrown under the bus. Because yeah. that's how Halstead Street is. The one end, it's in the whole financial district. Clear on the other end, it's the hood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So rubber gloves, folks. Before that, they didn't use rubber gloves. Were That's they the nitro scary. gloves or just the latex ones? <laughs> well, what happened is his assistant surgeon, um, when she would dip her hands in the carbolic acid, she had eczema. And if she was having a breakout, it was extremely painful. So he telegraphed the Goodyear company and said, hey, can you guys make a pair of gloves? You know, from the fingertips past the elbows, not too thick so that we lose tactile function. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they said, yeah, okay. And they sent them two pairs, and it worked, and they used them ever since. Now we use them for working on our cars. Everything, yeah. <laughs> well, I have a pair here. Here we go. <laughs> they, they, you always you always like to hear that lovely snap. I love yep. it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and bend over. <clears throat> it's a condom for your hand. We're going yeah. in. You know something? I can't yep, put these. We're going it, it, in. I, doctors put these on pretty easy. I, I have problems putting them on. Of Blow it, some air into it first. Well, yeah. Like yeah. A, like a balloon, and then it'll be easier to. Yeah. Uh, then they got the powder free and the non powder free and. Yep. Whole Powder freeze are easier to get on, but they suck. Yeah. Uh, it won't be snot free in a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 you know, it's like this is the part of the cold that is the worst. Well, it has a lot, it gives a lot. Yeah. It, it gives a lot of snot. It, it, I go, I get my, my laryngitis, you know, and, uh, so, I, I, but it's not the part of the cold where you really feel bad in the head, you know? Puny? Yeah. yeah. Puny. So I'm, you know, I guess I'll be better in the next couple of days. But, gee, did I have to go through this? And then I come in, and I'm sick, and I figure I don't really don't want to do a show tonight because I'm sick, but I'll do a show anyway. And I come in, and the thing fucks up on me. I mean, yeah. give me a fucking break. <clears throat> Cut me some slack. Well, at least you're able to fix it. It's hmm? not what you think it is. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, it's you not what I think, think it's great, it is. but it's not. I got that. It's so 70s. And so anyway. Um, People think it's funny. Yeah, but it's I, I'm not. a little less, uh, Phil, I'm a little less bothered by this whole cancer thing than I was because at least I know what it is and what we got to do, you know. Yeah, it's the cards you get dealt yeah. And, I, and I'm just, just afraid the doctor. Deal with I'm afraid the doctor's going to say, "Oh no, no, you've got you know," because I I'm in the medium the risk cat, medium <laughs> rat risk category. But I had a couple of those little hot spots, you know. It didn't yeah. go into an eight or anything like that. But and uh, um, so I'm I, I'm wondering if he'll say to me, uh, it's "Not good," you know. But my well, my doctor felt it was fine, you know. You know they'll they'll treat it, and if it, and they'll monitor what's going on with the PSA, and yeah. they'll give you some more tests. And if uh, the, the treatments don't work, you can always do what I did. I mean, it's two weeks no, of misery. Actually, actually, what they'll they'll do with me if it starts going back up again at my age is it put me on hormones again. They're going to put me on hormones anyway yeah. for a couple of months. So everybody, get ready for me to grow tits. And uh, and be moody and cry a lot. Might get hair. <laughs> and what's the other thing? I'm, oh yeah, I'll gain some weight. I gain about average of nine pounds. Can Let I ask see. you on your first date? Yes, sure. <laughs> sure. In fact, you can uh, you can grab my pussy. You know, I mean, Ooh. because it also shrinks the, it also shrinks the penis. So you know, I'll probably it'll invert itself. You know. And you they know, didn't even have to give me hormones for that. I was thinking <laughs> about it tonight, and I was thinking, you know, that penis gave me many, many serviceable years. You know, I had a lot of fun with that penis. And if this is what happens now, I guess this is what happens now, and I'll just have to say, goodbye, guy. Nice, nice, just you know, having your Try around. the other side. Hey, I, I was talking to a customer today, and uh, she has, she'd gone through a lot in her life. And I had sent her a, a book, Man's Search for Meaning, uh, by Viktor Frankl. And she's got MS. Her husband committed suicide about four months ago. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, her life 
wasn't wasn't going all that well. And so uh, she wanted me to measure for carpet today to help her sell her house. And, uh, you know, I said, yeah, you know, I had prostate cancer. And uh, she says, yeah, my my dad had prostate cancer. Uh, he passed away. She says, does it work? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no. <laughs> she says, well, yeah, you know, it's not so bad you're alive. <laughs> well, the, yeah. ho the hope is, though, uh, um, in your case, that it might start, you know, after a certain well, yeah, amount Yeah, there's of time. a possibility that the um, nerves will reattach. Yeah. Uh, Should have asked her to try. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? At least you're alive and well. Yeah, and that's what she said. And it, it's yeah. true. But when I first found out that I had cancer, I really just put it in a box and ignored it. Uh, and uh, it was uh, Renee Collins that kept yelling at me, you know, do something about it, do something mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. And it was like a little voice in the back of my head, Renee, you know, don't, don't wait, do something. Yeah. So I had it ripped out. Thank you, Renee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think... You know, I've, I've said to you that I think you may have made the wrong decision, that there were a lot of other nah, possibilities. No, I, I, I killed two birds with one stone. My prostate was so large that I wasn't getting mm. a decent night's sleep. I was, you know, up every hour. And uh, I just said, you know what? If I get rid of the prostate, I don't have an enlarged prostate and I don't have cancer. So yeah. I figured two birds, one stone. Uh, and that that's what weighed in mostly was this terrible uh, quality of, of sleep. And I was tired and uh, I just, uh, you know, I wanted it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's good that you got it out. You know, yeah. I mean, that you're happy. Really, it's quality of life. Well, you're happy you with the decision. Crap in you. you just want to get it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know. Um. <clears throat> I just wanted to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, about getting up ten night, ten times a night. Well, they yeah. could have, they could have done something to shrink the prostate. Uh, I tried. Uh, was, no. There's two things they give you: finasteride, and what's the other one? Well, the Flomax. Flomax doesn't uh, shrink the prostate. The no, finasteride they, they does. Those, yeah, I, I didn't like. I felt like I had side effects. I don't know exactly what it was anymore. Well, I, guess I what remember. the side effects of no prostate are. You know, yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, the, but well, the, the sheets stay clean. You're right. You're right. They do. And how many years ago was this? For me? Yeah. Uh, less last than two. Year? Was yeah. Last year? Yeah, May, I think it was last year, yeah. Yeah. So You're you're totally cancer free? At the moment, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it make me nervous. I got to go to do this next week. It probably was localized is what it, the whole thing was. Oh, you, yeah, I uh I had something on one side. They said that it didn't, uh, uh, it didn't, um, the, the tumor didn't rupture. Yeah. And uh, it didn't rupture. Well, I don't even have tumors. I... I don't even have tumors. Uh, you got something. Well, I mean, I... you got something growing. I mean, uh, no, there, there, are, there. there are cancer cells in my prostate, but there are no tumors. Right. He could well, not feel yeah. any tumors. He can't see any tumors. But as the cancer cells duplicate, eventually they will become a tumor you know, perhaps correct? perhaps yeah. at that point but yeah. right now they Takes don't time. you know although yeah. one of the cores was like uh you know four three another one was a four three uh four, you know four three is is higher than you want but it's not no it's still within the medium range so yeah. <coughs> let me see here where are my uh, cough drops yeah because they told me i was a three three when they did the biopsy yeah but uh, when they actually biopsied the, um, the prostate after they removed it, mm -hmm. they said I was a 4-3. So yeah. it was probably a good thing that I So did. you were what after they removed it? I had my earphones. Uh, oh. the, uh, they biopsied the prostate, and I was a 4-3 four, three, four, rather three. than a 3-3, three, three, which is what they thought at the time of the uh, uh, prostate biopsy. Yeah, but with a 4-3, still... Probably it could have survived having radiation and uh, and oh and yeah yeah I, w I was offered radiation but radiation wasn't going to do anything about uh, the size of the prostate yeah but I, they still I think if they did hormones they could shrink that prostate a bit you know? yeah but you know I, I didn't want to do it and and you couldn't do the seeds because your prostate was too large for the seeds exactly 
Yeah. See, my prostate is not large at all. Oh, yeah. And that's because you've been taking finasteride for the last couple of years and you shrunk it. Yeah. But I think I qualify for the seeds, and I, I, I may go with the seeds, I think. The yeah. seeds they call the Bacchi? Brachy uh, brachy therapy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's, um, you know, it, 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 it is a, it's not experimental, and it works. It's as good as any other kind of radiation. Ask the, the guy. The advantage uh, is it's maybe at most one night in the hospital, yeah, and then you're out, the guy, and that's it. Ask the guy uh, how many people that have this procedure have had a reoccurrence of the cancer in the prostate. Supposedly, and how does that compare? It, supposedly, to other in methods? his case, in an article that I read on him, he said he did he had ten thousand patients with prostate cancer, yeah. that he did the seeds on five thousand, and only two had a re reoccurrence. Oh, you know, so well, that's pretty good. Two out of five thousand. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, the the, um, the urologist that I spoke to at Kaiser, the second urologist, tried to tell me that that method, which I didn't qualify for, uh, but that method, they had more reoccurrences than uh, than others, and they steered me away from proton therapy because they said it was too new and they don't have enough. Uh, yeah, uh, the thing the know. thing that I think I would probably go for if if, if, if this guy is in really into the seed thing, so he mm. probably will try and sell me on it. But um, and you know, reoccurrence in my situation may not be reoccurrence like it would be in somebody with worse. Okay, when I had that false test and I thought that I had a reoccurrence a couple a couple month a month or so ago, two months ago. Yeah. Uh, I was reading that if uh, if I had, for instance, radiation, and it's common for prostate cancer to reoccur even after the prostate is removed, because some of the cells yeah. may get yeah. end up, you know, traveling right. around. And uh, so they said that uh, I, I believe I read this right that they can't that that if they try to do uh, radiation after uh, you've had radiation on your prostate. Uh, it's it's not as successful. Uh, yeah, but but here, here's an interesting because, here, here's because a, my, my because my prostate was removed, I would have been a better candidate for radiation on the second go around. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> here here's what they do actually. Um, if your cancer, um, if your cancer reoccurs, I mean, if if your cancer travels. Your prostate cancer travels right. to other parts of the body. It is the only cancer. What they can do is they can stop it with hormones. They can slow it down with hormones, even if it's spread somewhere else. I thought that the place it would go if it's spread would be bone. They said it goes to your bones. Yeah, but bone they can bone. still, I think, using hormones, yeah, bring pull it back. I, I, really? I don't understand it completely. But anyway, you've got the, 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 uh, the other thing they've got is this uh, cyber knife, and it, it, uh, it only requires five visits. I don't want the thing where I got to go for 40 visits to a goddamn radiation lab. I didn't want that and, either. And for 10 minutes uh, each one. I mean, I, I suppose you have your choice. And I would tell him either do, do the seeds if you feel they will do the job. Or do the uh, cyber knife. I said, but I'm not going to go for 40 visits. But find out if they do the seeds, if it limits any other procedures, should it not give you the results that you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, uh, well, well, who cares? I'll be dead by then anyway. So. Well, it gives you something to do and topics to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Kathleen does not look happy with this discussion. But that's only because she doesn't have a prostate, and she feels right. she's being left out. No, not at all. Yeah. So, like, no. Phil's I mean, may I've, still be in a I jar was somewhere. I worried when I found out you had prostate cancer, but you put me at ease. Yeah. Because if it had been 20 years ago or 30 years ago, it would have been far worse. Oh, and if I were younger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if I were younger, uh, younger people, if they get pro Phil got prostate cancer in his 60s. And you get it in your 60s, and it can it can be a problem. It, it can, can be aggressive. I yeah, had a yeah. friend, I have a friend, that uh, he, on the 
night that he was supposed to be on Ben Stein's money, yeah. he was told that he had prostate cancer. And this was like 20 some odd years ago. And he was a total wreck. And so he had gotten through all of the things and they were and they had the filming and he was he couldn't answer a question to save his life. But, you know, me, a very smart guy. And he, and he did get through all the preliminary <coughs> things. But that night or that day, uh, he gets the call. He's got prostate cancer and he was uh, c completely whacked. Is out. he still around? Yeah. See? Yeah. What do they do? Remove the prostate? I guess. I think. No, I think he had radiation. Really? Uh, uh I had to talk to him a lot about it. I, if you I, catch you know. it at the right time, it is the most curable of all the cancers. I, in fact, I looked up what's the most curable cancer. Number one, breast cancer. Okay. Mm. Number two, prostate cancer. So, you know, if you catch it in time, but that's true with anything. Yeah. yeah so, Well, enough of that. We've uh, gone down to 19 people watching us, and who knows? We lost a lot of them anyway. <laughs> Earlier. They're all getting a prostate exam right now. Yeah. What were you going to say donning, about... Someone's donning rubber gloves. <laughs> Biden's malarkey tour? Is this man, yeah, is this yeah. man a I, fucking I think he idiot? Yeah, I think he should have called it the get off my lawn tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's not doing too well. Uh, and and uh, Kamala Harris... Uh, she tapped out. Kamala. Yeah. Kamala. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I liked her. I think she's going to be she's going to be a force in the years to come. She certainly is doing a good job as a senator, and uh, maybe she's better off there than she is out on the road fighting for a job that is useless. You know. Yeah. But well, uh, she her uh, her ratings uh, had dropped to the point where uh, nationally she was behind. Uh, she, she was behind just about everybody. She, she was, no, she was behind Bloomberg. Bloomberg, that's it. Yeah. What she what yeah. had happened is she ran out of money. Yeah. And and she knew she couldn't fight the Bloomberg money, yeah. you know. And what we're saying now, and and this is why I don't like Bloomberg because what he's saying to the rest of the country is, see, billionaires have enough money to run for president. Right. Well, yeah, and, but the, he thinks a lot of himself, you know. Uh, especially when he was mayor, uh, he, he he's part of the nanny state. Don't drink large sugary drinks. Well, I know you don't drink large sugary drinks, and uh, you know, but it should be up to the individual. Not it shouldn't be regulated. Well, I, I you know I um, the, the thing was he he wanted to ban all sodas, even diet sodas, you know, yeah. and that he that, wants to ban everything. Yeah, um, guns. Well, he was, I don't know, I, he, I think he did a couple of things that were not, I didn't approve of, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't vote for him for president. I mean, I would if he was on the candidate, I'd have to. But uh, I, don't, I don't think that he's my, my guy. I'll tell you, every day, in every way, Buttigieg is looking better and better. You know, you just don't. He just doesn't have a track record, so you don't. Well, neither uh, did. What? How much of a track record did Donald Trump have? Well, you don't like Donald Trump. No, but how much of a track record did he have? Well, then I rest my case. Yeah. You know, if you don't like Trump, uh, but you like Buttigieg because he doesn't have a track record, when you no, find I didn't out say I didn't that say that I didn't like. Useless. I didn't said didn't say that I didn't like Trump. Because he didn't have a track record. I didn't like Trump because he's the most onerous human being in the, on the planet. He's a disgusting, vile creature. Okay? I'm sorry. Phil just lost his lunch. Josh, what do you think? What do you, what do, what's your thing in Buttigieg right now? I'm, I'm not a fan of his. <laughs> this is my Donald Trump. Oh my God. <laughs> is that a cap made for the size of that monkey? No. Oh, it's, my it's made cap. for the size it's of your head. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, Josh, let, put, put him away. It's distracting. Yeah. Us. Uh, <laughs> Josh, what do you what do you think of Buttigieg? I'm not a fan of Buttigieg. I wouldn't vote for him. Why are you not a fan? Well, I mean, uh, a couple reasons. The 
one of them that I just can't really quantify for people is, and some people aren't going to like it, is sometimes you just watch someone speak or see them on TV and, you know, you can't help it, but you just get a feeling where you just say, I don't like that guy or I don't like that woman, you yeah. know, for, for the job. I don't, I mean, it's not a personal thing. I mean, you know, it's not like I wouldn't, you know, help the guy if he were stranded on the side of the road or anything. I'm just saying he's running for president. And, you know, my initial reaction is I just don't, I don't see it. Don't, don't feel it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, but, but on top of that, I mean, a couple other reasons. One, I don't think that he's electable in an election mm-hmm. versus Trump. Yeah, I really don't. Uh, two, I, 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 I'm just not one of these people that thinks that the way to, you know, shake up Washington is to send someone there that's never been there before. I'm sorry. I just don't believe that. I know that a lot of Americans have something against professional politicians. I am in the probably extreme minority and that I do not. I think professional politicians oh, I, founded this nation and framed this nation, and I think they did a fine job. Well, I, I, I agree with you, though, Josh, because I've, I've said to people, I mean, if you're going to have somebody uh, come in and fix your plumbing, you're not going to get an amateur. You want somebody who can fix the plumbing. And, yeah. and while we find the job somewhat onerous and the way they do their business somewhat onerous, the fact of the matter is that when push comes to shove, if you're going to get somebody to go to Washington to represent you, you want somebody who knows how to do it. Yeah, and, and, and I think that he's a little bit, and this is coming from someone who I think is probably the same age as him, I, I think he's a little bit too young. I mean, he's, not too, he's, he's qualified as far as the constitutional requirement. So I think, you know, yeah. that's fine. I mean, he's allowed to run. I'm not okay. saying Let me can. ask you this. My opinion, okay. If he were the same age and he had been a, a, a congressman for the last eight or nine years or something, I would look at it a little bit different. But he's, I mean, he's a, what, a 37-year-old, 38-year-old mayor from, you know, fucking South Bend or what? I mean, I, 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 I just, to me, I just don't see it. Isn't there a lot of crime in South Bend, and they're and, and they're having a, a number of issues? Yeah, but, uh, do you, I don't know that he's doing how such can, a good how, job. No, how can you? No, you can't. You can't Are blame that. Are you talking about this. Elf on the Shelf? Who's that? And Elf on the Shelf is is Pete Buttigieg. That's her yeah. name for him. Uh, you can't you can't blame that on him, Phil. I mean, you you've got to you got to blame the economics of the area. There are a lot of other reasons that that kind of thing exists, you know. But the point is that, uh, okay, so, so you don't like Buttigieg, but who, who of, the, of the pack do you like? Or is there anybody? Uh, I mean, I've really, I've supported Biden from the beginning because I believe from the beginning, one, that he's qualified to be president. I mean, he's probably the most qualified of the people running in terms of experience. Right. And in terms of political abilities, and I also think he's the most qualified in terms of electability versus Donald Trump. Well, you know, which will the, be the person that this nominee runs against. I mean, that's pretty settled. Yeah. Well, he, know, but here, here people don't believe that. I, that's fine. I understand that, he, but I do. Here's the thing. Um, you know, when you talk about experience, who of all the people running for president in the last God, last uh, 15, 20 years, thirty years? was the most experienced. General Haig. No, he didn't run for president. Well, yeah, he did. He, well, he, he ran in the primaries against uh, I'll tell Bush. you who was. And, of well, course, I think, and nobody... I, nobody I, think, huh? I think the first George Bush was probably one of the most experienced people to ever run for mm-hmm. the presidency right. of yeah. the United States. I got somebody, be- I got somebody better. Hillary uh, Clinton. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Hillary I'm, has. I helped. mean, look at what she was. She was. Yeah. She, she was. Uh, she was a Secretary of State. She it was, was a was an ambassador. I mean, not an ambassador, but a, uh, a, um, a what do you call it, senator? I mean, yeah. you can go on and on with her. Her experience was very deep. They and, made her a senator. That guy who retired in New York. Uh, forget uh, about it. She may, might have been made a senator, but nevertheless, she was a senator. And since right. she had done all these various functions, she knew how the how how the country worked better than I know how to take a crap in the toilet, but that doesn't make me a plumber. 
You know? What does that mean, Phil? Well, Hillary Clinton was made a senator. What did she ever do? She did nothing. She was and, a secretary when, of state. And, and she fucked up things when she was secretary of state. All I what know you, is what did she, what did she, fu- of, what did she uh, fuck up? Sec- what did she fuck up as secretary of state? Uh, she fucked up the uh, the uh, uranium deal with the Russians. Uh, I believe uh, Benghazi was another uh, another. Well, that thing. was her getting, fault. That was her fault. Getting aid to the. Uh, that was her fault. Yeah. How was it? How was that her fault? And then fault? she covered it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How was she that? Covered it up. How was that her? How was that her movie? fault? How was that her fault, Phil? Well, it was her fault because she covered it up. Look, covered it's what up? The Benghazi uh, uh, thing. Covered. She said it was. Due to uh, cartoons and a and a movie uh, that uh, that they was were the up original that was the original thought that was flown by after about a week that notion was gone. Yeah, uh, come on, it's absolute no, bullshit. No, Phil, Phil, um, Benghazi was caused by the ambassador. He ha- he. He helped. He put himself he, in harm's he way. Fucked, he fucked up. He was told, do not go to Benghazi. Okay? And he said, I want to go to Benghazi. And he took his people with him. And that happened. And he was warned not to. Okay? Uh, so, a, hmm? oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, but in terms of the current political debate, it, none of that stuff to me really matters. The argument was over whether or not experience is important to be president and you were just arguing that she had a lot of experience yeah and i mean whether or not she was any good at it i guess is just it, it doesn't matter that's like saying some places want to hire a supervisor and they say well i only want to hire someone that's been a supervisor before okay well just because you've been a supervisor somewhere for 10 years doesn't mean you were any good i mean right. you could have been the worst fucking supervisor that place ever had and here's this guy over here who's never been a supervisor before, never been given an opportunity, he would do 10 times the job. So it's a it's a matter of philosophy. Some people say, I'll give anyone a chance, and some people say, no, I'll only hire people who have done the job before. You know, I mean, in the case of the Los Angeles Rams, if they would have said, oh, we're only going to hire someone who's been a head coach before, you know, Sean McVay would still be watching game film in some dark room somewhere, and they would have missed out on an NFC championship game and a Super Bowl. So that's a philosophical question that owners and managers and people make and that's what the american people will have to decide i mean i just think that all the argument over this you know crap that happened five eight nine ten years mm-hmm. ago whether she was any good at it doesn't matter because she's not running for president sometimes i wish some people in the republican party and in the democrat party would fucking maybe wake up and realize i'll, I'll that. tell she's you not I, think, running for president. Who cares? I, I think biden has a problem and the problem has been caused by donald trump uh, in his desire to negate him as a candidate, Biden as his competition, he asked the Ukraine for something he should have never asked them for. But in the process, he still tainted Biden, no matter what. You know, he managed to do the deed because people are now thinking, well, did Biden do something wrong? You know. And, and I don't think particularly Biden did anything wrong. I think his son should have never taken that position. But I don't think Biden did anything wrong. But you're not going to convince the American public of that because it's now inculcated in their minds that Biden might have done something wrong, even though that was the only thing that Trump wanted to get in people's minds. And he was, he's been successful at it, I think. And so therefore, brilliant. therefore, he is, don't say brilliant when you say Donald Trump, Phil. Well, uh, that's what he did. Brilliant. And, and and he'll take down the next one and the next one and the next one. Well, I'm, exactly. That's what fight. he does. That's not what he did. That's what he does. Yeah. And yeah. he's good at it. But, you know, I don't think that uh, Bernie is a good idea. And I don't think that Elizabeth Warren's a good idea. Uh, so who does that leave us with? I mean, we're... we're so get, I, I guess uh, what I'm saying uh, is maybe you can... I've been taking shit for this for, you know, months, but maybe some people can slowly start to see my process of elimination that went on in my brain when I decided who I was. Could we could we easily assume nominee. here after this little discussion that maybe the Democrats have nobody? They got uh, Yang. I mean, uh, it's pretty damn close. I yeah. think that we are wait, 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 running pr- pretty damn short. close to what, Kevin? I, I think we're pretty close to, to having nobody except yeah. Biden, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, 
You got, I, yeah. I, I could concede your point that in the overall realm of national politics, we are running short on good and decent people to run for these offices. We had I fucking mean, 24. We, we, had, of, we, we had 24 and, people at one point running. You would think there would be one in that batch. Yeah, one. Well, you know, and, 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 there, and I mean nationally of both parties, by the way. So, but go ahead, Gavin. Yeah. Is there is there still one that's going to pop in somewhere? That's what I'm wondering. Is there still somebody that's going to pop in at a, you know in the, at the last part of the race here in you know the next couple months? Uh, that's what I keep looking for. Yeah. But well, who? That's possible. You know, they, they, a lot of people go, oh, Michelle Obama, but Michelle Obama want... or Oprah or wh whoever. No, I don't know. Michelle you know, Obama. But she doesn't want it. She doesn't want no. anything to do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, who could it be? How about you, Kathleen? Do you have anybody in this race that even interests you? So we're, no. do you just feel we're in a lot of trouble? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I do. Uh, I saw an interview uh, with uh, Andrew Yang and... Uh, What's his name? Ray Renati saw the same interview, and we both came away saying, you know, Andrew Yang is a surprisingly intelligent uh, a guy. I, you know, maybe he's not the the best at selling himself. Well, he's the, uh, to he, the public. He, here's his here's his, here's right, his campaign. He is, but but here, he's the same thing yeah. as Buttigieg. I don't think he's electable. Probably here, not. Here, Andrew Yang, uh, to begin with, I don't want your opinion on who should run because you'd want anybody to run who couldn't win. No, that's uh, not true. <laughs> I, I want somebody to run that will be the best for the country. I think that Trump is the best for the country, but that doesn't mean that I would want someone else to run and lose. Well, can I can I sum up Yang? Can I that isn't going can to be I good. sum up uh, Yang's campaign so far in in one little routine here? Yeah, the thousand yeah. dollars. You get a car, and you get a car, and you yeah. get a car. Yeah, he, 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 that's not who he is. And, and I think whoever is feeding him what to say is doing him a big disservice because his whole thing is, you know, the economy is changing. Uh, robotics are going to be a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need to do something to prepare the people to, to deal with this and re-educate themselves to handle this new economy. And by giving them a, uh, uh, some money uh, every month, and I don't necessarily agree that that's the right way to do it, but this is what he's saying. Uh, but by giving them this money, they 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 can make a choice whether they want health care. They can make a choice what they want and use it any way they want. But uh, he's giving them the opportunity to to deal with this new economy. And, and I, no one else is talking about this. Uh, Kevin well, constantly used to talk about, hey, how robots are are going to take over and they're gonna, there's going to be less and less jobs. Right, Kevin? And yeah, here's a are. guy. And, right. And here's a guy that's talking about it. And uh, now, I, I just fall back in, in, with people like, you know, Andrew Yang or whatever. I mean, I won't deny his intelligence. I just think that I have watched, you know, roundtables of – historians after historians and read papers and books and and come to the conclusion and like most others that some of our least effective and worst presidents were some of the smartest the most intelligent people to ever hold the office and i've just almost come to the conclusion that i mean i i don't want someone who is as stupid as donald trump and i i truly believe that he is a not a very smart individual but I, I don't know that if you tell me someone went to Harvard and I mean he, he got a 12.0, it was the the greatest fucking graduate ever, and then he went here and he went. To, I, I don't care, because some of those people were some of the most ineffective leaders this country is. John Quincy well, Adams, I, I, you know what, Wilson. You, I mean, some of the most highly Woodrow, educated Wilson. people. You know what? You know. You know what? The problem that wait, we have today. Did, did, some no. of this book smart and street smart. Well, uh, here's you know, the, here, wait, here, here, no, Trump. here's the problem. Here's the problem. Is that you know uh, the I notion that somebody who's good with money makes a good president should be just gotten rid of immediately. The you people know. that are around Trump uh, that uh, I have seen interviewed all say that Trump works in a different way than other people. What he oh does yes, he, he does. He puts, <laughs> oh, no he shit. puts people in a room and he has them hammer it out. And then he makes his decision. 
So you see this conflict uh, uh, taking place oh, in the room, God but what him. he's doing he j- he j- is he j- he's he j- getting he both sides of the he issue. He just Trump got, is he, a very intelligent he j- guy. Oh, no. You're mixed. Well, you just believe in the media. You be- you know, and... and uh, you know, but Phil, I don't believe the media. I listen to what the man says, and what the man says is totally and utterly idiotic. Okay, I don't want my. Don't pre- I'm sorry, I don't want my president on stage using the term bullshit. Okay, I'd like a little time. more dignity for my president. Yeah, well, you know, everybody's got dignity, dignity. But you know, meanwhile, this guy is getting stuff done. He's, I can say bu- I can say bullshit because I'm doing a a, a second rate uh, podcast here. But the fact is, when you're president of the United States, you're setting the tone for the rest of the nation. Wait a you're minute. Setting this the- is the. I'm sorry, Alex. This is the number one podcast on GabNet, and don't you forget. I I, I realize that. Okay, now, stop putting it down. Serving over a dozen people. <laughs> A baker's dozen. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, a baker's dozen? That, that's a royal flush. How was everybody's Thanksgiving? Good. What did you do? Baked, cooked. Yeah, made a turkey. I su- yep. Yeah. Uh, what is your signature part of that meal? Because don't say the turkey, because the turkey mm-hmm. is either good or bad on its own for the most part. You know? Probably. For my son, it was the yams because I used uh, apple apple brandy. Okay, see, because I mean, would you agree with me that the turkey is just something that does it's it's either a good turkey or it's a bad turkey? Well, what I did you know? with the turkey is I went across the street and picked some rosemary out of Jim's front yard, my yeah. neighbor, yeah. my domino buddy, yeah. and then I picked an orange from my neighbor behind me and I chopped it up. And I rinsed off the rosemary and I shoved it into the turkey and then I, I um, baked it and it just came out fantastic. Yeah, but part of it has to do with having a good turkey that isn't yeah. too dry or whatever when it's cooked. Right. Uh, uh, we, we had a splendid turkey here, but Marjorie does. Uh, she does a. She did a stuffing, that is killer stuffing. I mean, it mm. just blows your mind. Um, you know, with uh, with sausage in it and apple and uh, very very little breading in it. You know, it was just wonderful. Uh, and um, you know, what's interesting. I got to tell you this. We we <clears throat> it started out that we just invited our friends Jack and uh, and and Natalia over to be with us for Thanksgiving. And as you know, Jack has not been well lately, and he's 88. And all of a sudden, as two other people said, oh, we have no place to go, so we, okay, come on over. Finally, before we knew it, we had nine people, (laughs) right? And she bought too small a turkey. But so was this dressing like Herosis, you know, where you don't... Uh, uh, I'm telling a story here, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm thinking about the dressing. <laughs> no. uh, so uh, um, there was this one woman there who was 93 who came over with somebody. And my, you know, my friend Jack has been ailing, and he's hardly, you know, he's just sitting at the table kind of like not entirely 100% aware of where he is. He's 88. This woman is 93 and sharp as a nail. I mean, she was just the, one of the most amazing women I've met, especially at her age. Um, and I just went, you know, you never know the way the die is cast as to how yeah. you're going to age. And no two people, you know, you would think if she was 93, she'd be in worse shape than Jack. No, no way. My mother is 91. Yeah. She doesn't take any pills. She still exercises. She mm-hmm. acts. She's done. She does commercials. Uh, she does yoga and uh, drives, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, she's you know amazing. You would think that she was yeah early, late seventies, early eighties. But that that was my treat at the Thanksgiving table. I mean, she was sitting next to me, and I went, "Oh boy, this is going to be a night of misery because it's going to be somebody going." What'd you say? What? No. I was holding this whole conversation with her and, you know, <coughs> and talking about politics. 
uh, everything. Of course, we didn't talk politics at the table, even though everybody there was of the same bent. But it's been said that this year, at a lot of Thanksgiving tables, people are not mentioning politics. They're straying away from it because if you got nine people there, at least two of them are going to believe the asshole's doing a great job. <laughs> There'd be a food fight. There'd be a food fight, and why have misery on... So nobody was talking politics at Thanksgiving tables this year. Probably smart. What, you, what, did, you, what did you do for Thanksgiving, uh, Phil? Uh, I went to... Uh, I, I didn't invite anybody over, and I didn't get invited anywhere. Uh, there's you a know, reason for that, uh, you know. So I went uh, to a Brazilian steakhouse, and... Uh, it, you know, it's a new one that just opened up in Walnut Creek. So, uh, you know. I, oh, yeah. Our forefathers, when they had the first Thanksgiving, had a nice table full of Brazilian uh, meat. And meat. I, so I decided, yeah. you know, I'd do an international thing. I'd support the Brazilians. Uh, the service was great. The salad bar was pretty good. I've been at Brazilian steakhouses, and the salad bar at those places are somebody phenomenal. Just, somebody just wrote, Alex, please replace Phil with his mom. <laughs> Fuck them, <laughs> and uh, then, uh, then, uh, but the meat it was salty, and uh, I, I don't think I'd go back. Yeah, yeah. But I've been there's a there's a Brazilian steakhouse. Well, in that, San Francisco. I don't even want to know then how you spent Thanksgiving because you didn't spend Thanksgiving. You spent I don't know Brazilian Hanukkah or something. I don't know. <laughs> I gave thanks over at the Brazilian restaurant. Right. Yeah. Right. How about you, Josh? What did what'd you do? Uh, the night before, we were staying in a hotel somewhere uh, together, but we came home that day, and we, we didn't go anywhere or do anything. I don't I don't typically go to my family's gatherings. So. Did you make a turkey or anything like that? No. Uh, no. Her, her and I don't usually do much for yeah. the holidays. Because I like, and, I like uh, Thanksgiving. Actually, I like Thanksgiving because it's the one holiday that really is just kind of nice. You know, there's nothing, there's no religion associated with it. There's no great pressure unless you're the person having to make the dinner, you know. Uh, yeah. it's, and it's just eat and enjoy each other's company. How about you, Kevin? What you, what'd you do? Uh, we had ours here. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be up at my mom's at the, the new home the new uh, apartment at her uh, uh, elderly living home mm -hmm. that she moved into last year, yeah, last uh, six months ago or whatever. And it uh, kind of got turned around and ended up at our house, which was uh, a chore for her to get down here. You know, it's uh, 150 miles away. So yeah. my brother, who I haven't talked to almost all year, decided he was going to come down here because he decided to take her down here and, that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there Where was one people... Trump joke he brought up, and it, it just brought crickets to the dinner table. Hey, uh, where do people stay when uh, you have relatives? Do they stay in a hotel, or do they stay at your house? Oh, they didn't stay. They oh. just came down and left. Uh, you know, 150 on miles, and then you eat and go? Yeah, they just came. We, we have early, you know, we, we had dinner about, Three o'clock in yeah. the afternoon, three thirty, and then they left about an hour and a half or so later after dinner, and they get home. They get back up to the you know, Burlingame yeah. about eight o'clock or so. Now you did, uh, uh, Kathleen. You did Thanksgiving at home at your place this year, right? Yeah, because usually we go up to my parents, but in lieu of what's happened, and it's my son's favorite holiday, so it was nice. You know, we just stayed home, and I. You know, cooked everything. We got a lot of invites to uh, other people's places, but um, you know, I thanked them and basically said we just wanted to, you know, stay home. And I yeah. built a fire. You know, did you have and anybody we had really else? Nice over? Thanksgiving. Did you have anybody else over? Or? Um, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about your father? Your son's favorite holiday is Thanksgiving? Yeah. yeah. He, he despises Christmas because the whole thing's a lie. What about Halloween? You know? Nope. I mean... <laughs> no. The devil's night as far as he's concerned. No, he's I... He's a bunch I, of bullshit. I, I, of I really like her son. She's done a good job raising him because I believe, uh, to me, Thanksgiving was always my favorite holiday. Yes. 
uh, I hated Christmas because to begin with, I was Jewish. And it was always like I couldn't even begin to start celebrating it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because you killed Christ. And you know, no, he, it if, was the Romans. <laughs> come on. If he, yeah, com if he comes, Jews. and if he comes, no, you can't did Pontius, it. Oh, so, hey. Pontius Pilate had all the power in his hands. The Jews shot Osiris. My son's laughing his ass off. <laughs> Don't get my mom started. He, did uh, did he see the Warriors? Uh, the movie? No, but you know what? I'll have to show him because he'd really like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Alex was uh, going around the table. Uh, no, uh, we've already gone. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then, they, then they, hey. I, I, you know, the problem is that uh, uh, Jeff is so quiet. Uh, Jeff. First of all, we had <laughs> steak. No turkey. Brazilian. Nope. Then you didn't celebrate Thanksgiving. <laughs> I guess. You know, that I mean, it don't have to be turkey yeah. anymore. A lot of people are going to prime rib, ham, and all kinds of different stuff. Now. So I'll tell you what happens. You're coming down this weekend. We're gonna it's we're supposed to have lunch together, uh, but Marjorie leftovers. still has turkey and turkey soup, and we're gonna force it down your throat. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's what I made yesterday because I was off, so I played Little House Not on the Prairie. I baked homemade bread and I made. Turkey soup. Mm. Mm. Well, she makes turkey soup, but she makes it in these these kettles. Okay, she f yeah. literally makes soup for an army, and then yeah. I've got to eat it all week long. Tina's That's been what brewing I did. one for the last two days now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and I don't mind it, but she could make it in slightly smaller batches because I'm sorry, I don't want to do like uh, oh I don't know mushroom barley soup for four or five days. You know, it's good for maybe <laughs> two nights. Two nights I can go for it. But and she makes great soups. Or I think it was um, it was um, um, uh, Albert who said that she doesn't make soup. Uh, she makes a stew. That's really what it nice. is because yeah. it's so thick and good. She's really the soup maker. Yeah, she'll leave a little bit here and then take the other three gallons to work. We, yeah, well, my, she's we've, she's got these little containers. She bought a whole bunch of them, and she takes them to work and pu nice. pushes her soup on everybody. Hey, you know. uh, I got uh, no fill tomorrow. There's the uh, banquet for the photography club. Oh, good. And then is the photography club off for the year? Uh, yeah. Okay. Until well, January. Too bad. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's that's it. I'm glad, you know, we finally got a show going here after uh, equipment problems and all of that. And to you people listening to the audio-only version, it starts in the middle. What can I say? Hey, listen, thank you, uh, Kathleen. Always love seeing you, darling. Uh, uh, you must come see us again. <laughs> Uh, 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 Jeff Stein, thank you, thank you, Phil, thank you to uh, Kevin, and thanks uh, to, of course, uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Josh Wheeling. I'm, I'm, I'm losing it. Hey, <laughs> all of you people, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back. Okay, there they go. That's our. Uh, that's our people, okay? And we we finally got our Skype going. Uh, it life is better, okay? All right. Anyway, uh, what what's wrong with the audio here? We're having audio problems. Okay. Anyway, uh, we've got to go. Uh, uh, the show next is the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop. We'll see you again tomorrow night uh, at uh, ten o'clock, same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.